Hi, I'm Jeff Richards, and welcome to our first Japan Today Spotlight of 2026. This year is the year of the horse. It traditionally symbolizes power and forward motion, which feels kind of fitting as we look at Japan's energy future. Japan is the world's fifth largest single country CO2 emitter after China, the United States, India, and Russia. And it depends heavily on imported fossil fuels. In 2024, 65% of Japan's electricity came from coal and other thermal sources. Just over one quarter came from renewables, according to the Institute for Sustainable Energy policies. The Energy White Paper 2025 says Japan's renewable rollout is, well, it's behind other developed countries. In this episode of Japan Today Spotlight, we'll look at Japan's energy transition plan, what the government has pledged, the return of nuclear power, and how new technologies can or will shape Japan's future energy needs. In November, Japan received the satirical Fossil of the Day Award, again, for its slow shift away from fossil fuels. It's an award it also received in 2019, 2021, 2022, and 2023. The Climate Action Network gives this award to countries seen as lagging on climate action. Just to put that list in context, in 2020, it gave the award to the US. Last year, it gave it to the whole G7 group of nations. In 2025, it criticized Japan for burning high volumes of carbon heavy fuels across industry. These repeated awards rarely gain attention here in domestic media, yet they highlight how the world sees Japan's slow pace. Prime Minister Sanai Takaichi is sticking to the plan set by her predecessor, Shigeru Ishiba. Restart nuclear plants and expand renewables to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. That plan's key targets, 60% emissions reduction by 2035, 73% reduction by 2040, nuclear power to supply 20% of the energy mix by 2040, renewables to reach 40 to 50% up from 23%, and coal to fall from 70% to about 30 to 40%. The plan also calls for next generation energy sources, including nuclear fusion and green hydrogen. Nuclear power is a relationship Japan doesn't want but can't walk away from. After the Fukushima disaster, all 33 reactors went offline. Public opinion then turned sharply against nuclear energy, but that's now shifted. Japan is resource poor and it can't run on renewables alone. So reactors are coming back online. This month, the world's largest nuclear plant, the Kashiwazaki Kariwa complex in Niigata Prefecture, is set to restart. It will be TEPCO's first restart since 2011. Japan needs nuclear power to reduce its dependence on fossil fuels and to meet rising electricity demand from AI data centers. Post Fukushima 14, of those reactors have resumed operations. Japan passed a law in June allowing reactors to operate beyond 60 years to account for shutdown periods, aging coastal reactors in an earthquake prone nation still make many folks uneasy. Research by ABB, a global technology leader in electrification and automation, shows that Japanese companies are adopting AI systems rapidly to boost their efficiency. AI is driving a surge in electrification and digitalization. Data centers are expanding across Japan to help with this energy transition. SoftBank, 
plans a major AI data center in Osaka on 440,000 square meters of land. It hopes to offer more than 150 megawatts of power capacity. Microsoft will invest nearly $3 billion to expand its AI infrastructure in Japan. It'll upgrade two Japanese data centers with AI-ready semiconductors and an AI training program for 3 million workers. Data centers will drive 60% of Japan's power demand growth by 2034. They will use electricity equal to that of 15 to 18 million households, according to consulting firm Wood McKenzie. This raises an uncomfortable possibility. Japan may expand AI faster than it can secure the electricity to run it. So as you might have noticed, the downside to all of these data centers is that they require enormous amounts of electricity and water. These are vast warehouses of computer servers and other IT equipment that power cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and other tech applications. And it's not unique to Japan. In the US, rising demand from data centers is already pushing up household electricity prices. In Japan, the International Energy Agency, the IEA, says AI-focused data center expansion will drive a major rise in energy consumption. This is no longer just a technical problem. It's political. Consumers don't want higher electricity bills. Communities don't want forest land cleared for server farms. Politicians certainly don't want to take responsibility for any of it. This is one reason Japan's nuclear phase-out has been delayed. Its aging reactors are staying online. If AI keeps expanding without a clear sustainability strategy, it could become a driver of climate change rather than a tool to help solve it. So can AI fix its own energy problem? Some say Japan should cap data center growth until it secures cleaner power. Others warn that slowing AI would hurt competitiveness. Carbon capture and storage will be needed to slow global warming. Japan does have abundant renewable resources, solar, hydro, wind, and geothermal. The challenge is using them all at scale. Costs are high and stable supply is difficult. Still, there is progress. Railways show what can be done. About 75% of train energy comes from thermal power today. The transport ministry wants to cut the sector's emissions by half by the late 2030s. The five kilometer Setagaya line in Tokyo runs on hydro and geothermal energy. Tokyo Railway has shifted all nine of its Tokyo Kanagawa area train lines to certified non-fossil power in 2022. This cuts about 160,000 tons of CO2 emissions each year. Other operators are following. Japan's first commercial scale floating wind farm sits five kilometers off the Goto Islands in Nagasaki Prefecture. It has eight turbines and began full operation in January. Floating turbines are particularly well suited to Japan's deep coastal waters where fixed turbines are difficult to install in the seabed. Yet, Japan's wind ambitions face a huge supply gap. To meet its 2040 wind power target, Japan will need about 200 new 15 megawatt turbines each year. It lacks domestic turbine manufacturers at that scale, and it doesn't have enough large production sites. Japan will earmark more than 100 billion yen, about $640 million, in a supplementary budget to support nuclear fusion research. Funding will go to startups and upgrades for firms and universities. Fusion combines 
two light nuclei to release massive energy. It's the same reaction that powers the sun. If it's realized, it could offer clean, affordable, and near limitless power. Another focus is green hydrogen. Japan holds about 24% of global hydrogen related patents and it leads in liquefied hydrogen shipping and ammonia co-firing. Hydrogen produces zero greenhouse gases at the point of use. It could transform heavy industry and transport. Japan is trying to move from fossil fuels to renewable energy. And it's not easy. Targets slip, progress stalls. The reasons are political, economic, technological, and they're quite obviously rooted in the legacy of the 2011 Fukushima disaster. This isn't only Japan's problem. The world is betting heavily on AI while at the same time trying to prove it still cares about the environment. Japan just feels the pressure sooner because it relies on imported energy and it can't afford to fall behind or pick up another fossil of the day award for its political mantle. So here's a question. What are you placing your bet on? Working faster on cleaner power for the planet or scaling rapid AI growth and letting it make that decision for us. Let us know in the comments. I'm sure some of them will be fueled by chat GPT. I'm aware of that or straight up nonsense, but just consider it a little homework assignment. Thanks for watching Japan Today Spotlight and from the Japan Today newsroom here in Tokyo, I'm Jeff Richards. See me next time.